I had this street when I was in Bilbao, a real Spanish street. You take bread of the country and really toast it, rub it with garlic, a very, very ripe tomato. The flesh, you know, you rub on top of it. You put a piece of prosciutto or no prosciutto on top, right on that tray. A little drizzle of good olive oil. This is heaven. I always pick up new ideas when I travel and I like to share them with you. I'm Jacques Pépin and this is Fast Food My Way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. This is Paco, my doggy. He likes to be with me in the kitchen. And he doesn't eat much. Convenience food doesn't just mean ready-made dishes for me. Convenience is a pre-cooked crust for my chorizo, mushroom, and cheese pizza. Canned tuna I use for dry pasta in my orecchietta with fennel and tuna. An apricot jam I use to finish for my popover with apricot jam. So let's start cooking. I start with those. You have them at the market in different shapes, different size. Uh, in fact, you can use, you can use lavash bread uh, as well as uh, tortilla, you know, which I do occasionally. So what I do with this, I usually put a little bit of uh, oil on top. This is the pale side, you know. The other side is a bit better with some cheese on it. So I turn it over so that it's going to brown in the oven now on this side. And then uh, we're going to put some onion in there. I have onion here. You can slice the onion very thin. And red onion, white onion. You know, it's the type of pizza where uh, often you empty your refrigerator and whatever hangs around, this is what you put in there. So I have finely sliced onion here. I'm going to put a slice of garlic also. And it's one time where I really like to slice the garlic rather than crush it. You know, slice very thin like this, flake of garlic. If you don't want to do it with a knife, you know, you can use a vegetable peeler to do that. And the vegetable peeler will do a great job. Okay, three cloves of garlic. My guests love strong food. I don't have any timid guests in my kitchen. We eat a lot of garlic. As long as everyone eats it, so it's fine. And drink red wine on top of it. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to put chorizo in it. And of course, at my market, I have four or five different types of chorizo. And frankly, this one, which is a chorizo from Spain, is probably the strongest. So this one is a bit mild. This one is weird looking. I think I like that one the best. And there is a, you know, a little bit of a casing on top. Remove the casing and your chorizo. Sometimes you go to Portuguese market and they are called churizo, C-O-U uh, rather than C-H-O, C-H-O-U. And uh, it has usually very uh, uh, larger pieces of meat. But this one is very good. It will give some color to your pizza as well because this is flavored with Spanish paprika. And that's why it's reddish. And when you cook like a paella on anything with your chorizo, it tends to uh, discolor, you know, the, the make it all reddish. So. This is bit, you can of course, your classic pizza is with, uh, with, you know, Italian uh, sausage as well. But uh, I like the chorizo. Yeah, this one is pretty spicy. Yeah, 
can prepare that ahead, you know. You never go wrong with pizza. I'll do all kind of small pizzetta, you know, small pizza. And I say with, um, with tortilla shell, uh, seven inch, eight inch and all that. I'm gonna put some, some uh, mushroom here. Why mushroom? Well, they happen to be in my refrigerator. So it's often the case that what I put in a dish is determined by what's in the refrigerator on that particular moment. Okay, so those are regular white button mushroom. I mean, white mushroom. Those mushrooms actually are one of the best mushrooms in the market. A lot of people go for expensive mushroom, and I buy, you know, uh, 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 sometimes chanterelle and other type of mushroom at the market who cost like a fortune and have less taste than those mushrooms. Especially if you buy those mushrooms when the veil is slightly apparent like this. You know, often when you buy just the button mushroom, it's a tiny mushroom that has a lot of liquid in it and has less taste. When the mushroom get older, it open, the veil become apparent and it's really ripe. That's when it has taste. Better than that even, you get it in the leftover part of the supermarket because when those become black a little bit, they put them there and you get them for nothing at all. So think about that. Pepper. And uh, I'm going to grate some cheese and likewise, you know, I use different type of cheese. Of course, your classic is your mozzarella cheese that you can grate, I mean, crush like this or even do it by hand, really. This happened to be a pretty soft mozzarella, as you can see, but it's all right. Oops, stay up. But I love to put Swiss cheese as well. Or here I have a piece of uh, fontina. This is one of the other ways that I use leftover cheese when I do pizza. Often I open the refrigerator, I have such and such cheese, blue cheese as well, and I put it into in my pizza. So this is almost a show of leftover. See a piece of, uh, I could also slice it with a knife really, like you would do it with that uh, piece of old uh, camembert, you know, leftover. Well, I can't see my, my chorizo anymore. Okay, this around. I think I'm gilding the lily a bit too much, as we say. A, a tiny piece of, uh, a little bit of olive oil on top. And this is ready to go into the oven. Specialty pizza. Cost you $25. Here you can put it, you know, with what's left over in your refrigerator. 425 degrees or 400 for uh, a good 20 minutes or so. Even though the dough, even though the dough is cooked, uh, it still need that amount of time if you want it a bit, you know, crunchy and all it should be. And now we're going to the orecchietta, which is the little ear with fennel and tuna. I have a pound of those here. You know, they look like little ear and really the sauce stay in there, so they are very nice. I'm gonna put this, whoop, into boiling water salted boiling water. Okay. Then you don't want to, uh, you want to stir your, your pasta at the beginning a couple of times, whatever pasta you cook, so it doesn't stick at the beginning. When it starts boiling again, you don't have to cover it anymore. So I think that this is on high. It's gonna start boiling soon. So let's start the sauce that I have here. I'm gonna do a sauce with all kind of different vegetables. Start with olive oil, of course. I'm going to put onion in there. Onion. And I'm going to put pignole nuts to brown with the onion a little bit here. It's gonna take a minute or so to pick up some color. And during that time, I'm going to cut some fennel. One of those nice things is really nice because it's very, very thin. 
and uh, you know you want to hold it this way you don't want to put your finger in top, top here you can use that with a towel even but, and that's cut I mean it's shaved really very very thin okay see quite a lot I do the same thing with a salad you put a bit of salt on it and the salt of it get it a bit wilted and you can do a wonderful salad with that so here we have a little more for this what else another green vegetable I'm going to put that green pepper here you see the part where there is a separation here that's where I'll cut it sometimes I peel it but not in that case here Here we are. Those are mild paper. You know, I mean, you could put actually a jalapeno in there or a serrano. As soon as, as the pignole start getting a little color, then I'm going to add this. I see the butt fine. Moisture. This. red pepper I could have put pimientos you know that I buy at my market all done as well here we are all those vegetables are going to get a bit softer that's what I want you can see that the, the pignole now have picked up some color so I turn them so they are on top they don't brown too much but with this I'm putting resins and the canned tuna that I have here so the tuna I have some moisture in there and this is similar to recipe that I've that I've seen with uh, with pasta here with sardine you know and I've had it actually with canned sardine as well as with uh, with fresh one I'm gonna put a little bit of water maybe in there a couple of cloves of garlic here we are we have a lot of seasoning in there a lot of taste I'm gonna put paper on top a bit of salt cover that and that's going to soften for a couple of minutes well it's going well I think I should put some parsley in it whole bunch of parsley parsley is very good for you everything is very healthy everyone wants to die in good health so we're doing healthy food a lot of uh, good another couple of minutes of cooking let me check my pasta again mm. it's pretty al dente I like it al dente that it uh, you know firm to the teeth but not really when the center of the pasta is still a line of white uncooked dough you know which people prefer it that way not me and my mother like it well done okay this is cooked enough and I think it's time to uh, combine the two together 
when I do something like this, I always use, you know, some of the liquid from the pasta in a bowl at the end, you know. Because the pasta will still absorb this. Let me shut that off now. Let it drain. And then I can combine it. My pound of pasta. It's interesting when you think, when you cook pasta, sometimes, like if I put elbow macaroni, penne, rigatoni, any of those, a pound of pasta go a much longer way. I saw five, six people with it that I cook a pound of, uh, a pound of uh, uh, spaghetti or, uh, or uh, and uh, spaghetti and all that, usually it serves just my wife and me. So I don't know why, but uh, the linguine particularly with clam sauce, we don't get much more than two people. Okay, this is nice and mixed now. Let me taste it to see if the seasoning is right. Mm, that's good. Now I put Parmigiano, Reggiano in it. Don't be too modest with it. Maybe a little more olive oil, again in the center here. I think I have enough for 10 people here anyway. Okay. There is a big pasta bowl. Okay. When you do that type of thing, it's really a one, one meal type of thing. Well, on top of it, I like to add a little more pasta, sometimes with a vegetable peeler like this. Make nice, uh, you know, little strip of, of cheese. And maybe even on top of that, another little dish of, uh, of oil. Just a little bit. Oh, we can put some of that too, because after all, that's what we started with. So this is the oracchietta with fennel and tuna. Okay, let's make our popover with apricot jam. I have three tablespoons of, uh, of butter here melted. And what I'm going to put is half a cup of uh, flour in there, a couple of tablespoons of uh, sugar, a little dash of salt, putting two eggs, one, two, and half a cup of milk, about. I'll put a little bit in there and start mixing. You see, when you have a certain amount of liquid in a batter like this, it's good to put only half of your liquid in it so that it's thick enough, like it is fairly thick here. So when it's thick, I can work it out with the whisk as I'm doing here. And the thread of the whisk will go through something thick enough so that it liquefy it and make it very, very smooth. And then I can put the rest of the liquid. What I'm saying is that if I put all of the liquid at the beginning, then the, 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 the flour gets wet with the liquid, you know, and the protein in the flour, and what happens? They form little lump, and uh, then you have to strain it. About a quarter of a cup here of sour cream that I have in there. So this is a very fast dessert that she loves. I have three tablespoons of, uh, of butter in there that I put in there. There is a little bit left, of course, in my pan. And I'm gonna put that in there. That's it. And that goes into the oven this way. So it's pretty easy to do. Again, about 400 a 400 degree, 425 degree oven. Take about 20 minutes or so.
I might as well check my pizza when I'm here and I think it's done. The pizza is uh, beautifully brown. And I have it here. I have to close the door of the oven. Okay. And uh, the best, you know, with a pizza is really to do a salad with it, and that's, I think, what I'm going to do. And the green salad, very often now, what I do, I take a clove of garlic, I crush it. If I want to do it with garlic, chop it, you can use a... You can use a garlic press as well, you know, but the time it takes me to clean up the inside of that little thing, garlic takes me faster than doing it by hand. I have a jar of mustard here, and you, know, you can see there is about a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of mustard left in it. And often when I am at the end of it, or frankly, I take a fresh jar, I put that in there, and I put salt, and I put a fair amount of pepper in it, then red wine vinegar, you know, sometimes I take the things out about, yeah, about a quarter of it. Yeah, it's about one to four. And then the olive oil. I fill it up like this. And then I have a jar of vinaigrette, you know. I mean, this got to cost four dollars at the market, you know, all done. And here you have a jar of fresh vinaigrette. So it's ready for the next week. It's time you do a salad, as I'm doing here. You can see that by whipping it, it kind of emulsify it. You know, so I have my salad already here. That's it. Salad and pizza, one of the best meals you can have. And our pasta in addition today, this is carbohydrate, carbohydrate uh, you know, degenerate kind of recipe. Okay, let me Put this on top. This is hard enough. Yeah. My pizza will cut beautifully here. That's it. Okay. A nice portion of salad like this. Slice of pizza. A glass of red wine. This is it. This is my lunch. Chorizo, mushroom, and cheese pizza. I'm sure the popover is ready now. It's the type of dessert that the, the kid loves to eat. I do this way. And, uh, yep. Oop. Good. Came about nice and warm this way. I love to do that with a little bit of uh, apricot jam. I do my own apricot jam. I have incredible apricot. I love to do the jam. And this, you know, I just put it in the microwave oven about uh, 30 seconds, 40 seconds or more just to cool it up a bit. A little dash of cognac for me or my wife, you serve that to the kid, probably not. Up, and then we put that in the middle of it. You could put some nuts in it even if you wanted to. Bring that to the side. It's like a type of crepe, type of dessert which is really satisfying, easy to make, and good to eat. Here we are. Okay, you can put a little bit of a classic a powder sugar on top of this, you know, especially on the outside. Up. And this is a warm popover with apricot jam. If you put some on the apricot jam, you know, or in the apricot jam, you might as well put some in your glass too. And you know, when an unexpected guest arrives, you can pull together a wonderful meal to share from your pantry. Happy cooking. Visit our website at kqed.org slash morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. 
You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes. Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries. We do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. KQED television production.